Leadership is a demanding role that requires juggling multiple responsibilities, making tough decisions and inspiring others. While it can be rewarding, it also carries the risk of burnout. In this quick podcast, Kimberly Kaler discusses ways to alleviate and prevent burnout. Let's begin the podcast. Welcome everyone to the podcast. I'm Janice Kleins, Marketing Manager for AOE, and today we are discussing navigating leadership burnout. I have with me Kimberly Kaler, President of AOE, and we are going to be discussing how leadership is a demanding role that requires juggling multiple responsibilities, making tough decisions, and inspiring others. Um, Welcome, Kimberly. Thanks for joining me. Um, I'm excited to have you here today to talk about this. Thank you, Janice. So tell our audience what leadership burnout is and the symptoms of it. So leadership burnout, in my opinion, is when a leader is no a, no longer able to pull in the energy they need to be visionary. Um, to you know, a, a leader can still very effectively manage an organization, make decisions, move things through. But when you get into a phase of burnout, which can be you know challenged sleeping. Um, being lethargic. Obviously, if you look in any sort of health blogs or health information, you can see, you know, a whole list of health issues that may show up from burnout. But it also relates to not being able to go beyond the day to day um, because we're just, you know, operating out of pure exhaustion. Right. Um, so tell our audience ways one can alleviate or eliminate or prevent um, leadership burnout. So one of the key things to do is make sure that you're building time into your schedule for brainstorming, thinking, pondering, going beyond fighting the the sledge that we all daily have, which is getting through the email box and through meeting after meeting. I know sometimes I am really challenged and that's when I know that I'm experiencing burnout because I'm getting stuff done, I'm crossing things off the list, but I haven't had time to actually think. I haven't had time to actually create. I haven't had time to look for inspirations. I really haven't had any ideas. I'm just in reaction mode. So where can you find time in your schedule, even if it means you need to block out an hour or two once a week? Um, And, you know, I think it's a very personal thing, too. What works for you? Is it Uh, taking a run or taking a walk or doing some sort of other athletic pursuit? Um, Do you find, um, you know, that you can alleviate burnout by a hobby or something else that's a little bit meditative? So looking for different ways, maybe sitting and pausing and thinking about in, in what ways am I able to still be visionary? Okay. No, I, that sounds like great stuff. Um, So this next question is, I guess, kind of similar. So if you realize or think you may have burnout um, and or know somebody that may seem to be burned out, what are some ways or ideas that can help um, that maybe are different than what you went over just a few minutes ago? So why don't I answer the question um, based on if you see somebody that you think is burnt out, spend some time with them, um, especially if it's maybe an an employee or somebody that reports to you or, or works with you and find out really how they're doing. Ask them if they feel as if they are able to be creative in their role, or if they're just fighting through a to-do list. Um, You know, we've learned this with um, our team. We have a a whole team of very creative people, far more creative than me, especially those that are handling our branding and our graphic design portfolio and, and work for our clients. And when we load them up too much, the feedback I get is that they're just working through a to-do list and they're creative people. They need time to actually ponder and to think. So spend some time with your team members or someone that you think is burnt out and invite them to build some time into their schedule. Maybe give them permission to build some time in their schedule um, to find ways to alleviate burnout. Well, that's great. Um, So why is it important to be aware of this leadership burnout or recognize these symptoms? So the symptoms can show up in with somebody being, you know, quick to respond, maybe short in their responses. As we know, our personalities come out in different ways. So some people may retreat. 
Some people may be the angry burnt out person or even the mean burnt out person. Um, some may just disappear, very personality dependent. Um, but it's important to be aware and, and use those 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 signs and those symptoms when you're working so with somebody to notice if something else is going on. We also, as, as we know, we never know what else is going on in somebody's life too. So those are good touch points to find out if there's some other stressor and if there's any way you can help them. Okay, so can one just take a vacation? I mean, is that an option? Is that a suggestion? <laughs> so great question. And I actually took a vacation two weeks ago and one of the things that became apparent to me on vacation, and I was able to unplug for the most part, um, it, but we are so dependent, many of us that are in the knowledge worker space, on emails and meetings, and that keeps coming even when you're on vacation. And it can create a lot of anxiety for people. Um, there have been some studies that show that people actually don't take a vacation or avoid taking a day off just because they can't handle the stress and the anxiety that comes with it. Um, and it's something that that I'm looking on on the vacation I had two weeks ago. It became apparent to me when I would I had a time change difference. And when I'd wake up, I'd have more than 200 emails. And mm. it occurred to me that that's that's crazy. That's absolutely crazy. And I fought my way through it because nobody wants to come back to more than 2000 emails and the stress right. and the anxiety with that. So I'm working with my team to figure out, are there different ways to um, to work to work? So, yes, vacations are great. Unplug, but help your team understand what is unplugging really look like. And, you know, some companies have put into effect rules with, you know, if somebody's on vacation that an email doesn't go to them, et cetera. You know, there's a lot of things that you can do to be creative to help people really find that place of what that looks like. No, I agree. Sometimes a vacation can be more stressful, stressful than sure. going on a vacation. Um, so this is not a new topic for AOE. Can you tell our audience other resources that we currently offer? for this type of subject? So we have a lot of blogs just related overall to wellness. We have some blogs related to corporate mindfulness and that how that shows up in the workspace as well. Um, and I think this is all related to training, to leadership development, and even relates to succession planning. Um, so AOE is available. It is something that we take um, to heart in terms of wellness and what that looks like. It's evolving for us even, as I just shared, um, you know, having discussions in terms of work productivity and then, then the, how that could actually um, you know, be very hamstringing for an organization. So reach out, we'd love to talk to you about it. Okay. Well, thank you for joining me today. For our audience listening, um, you can find all these resources on our website, aoeteam.com. Um, we have webinars, blogs, uh, much more on our website for you to find. Thank you, Kimberly, for joining me today. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope this session provides value, and we hope you will join us for our next podcast. 